Okay, knight takes d4, can take with the queen or the bishop. The queen is the simplest, just going for this end game. Uh, yeah, let me know if I cut out again. Okay. All right, if he goes for the end game, we have a lot of pressure. So his rooks are kind of odd on these f1 and b1 squares. Can I go? I can't go for it right away. Okay. Um, just dropping back to g7 seems like the smartest move. And now there are two threats in this position. One is knight to d2 with the fork, and the other is g5. So my opponent wisely goes for rook to d1. Now, can g5 be played is the question. Uh, looks like it's possible. g5, f3. Oops f3, and then some sort of knight takes, uh, c3, looks pretty good. Or just playing it more simply with rook to c8, also looks good. I think I'll just grind out my opponent here, rook to, rook to c8. And here we have the two center pawns, which is a very big factor. Uh, white doesn't have either of his center pawns, and we have both, so we're going to be favored in most peace endgames, uh, being up upon and having these two center pawns. Okay, so he goes back to e2. Now, maybe a5 is good, just threatening to play a4, and this is what we call a pawn wedge. So if we're able to fix our opponent's pawns on the dark, dark squares like this, that'd be really good for us. Okay, uh, f3, pretty good. Now let's drop back to c5, either c5 or d6. Actually, let's go to, okay, let's go to c5. Let's go to c5. And now we're threatening to make this pawn wedge right here. Pawn to a4. Uh, and then he's not going to, be, going to be able to move these pawns over here. So he goes knight to d4, and pawn to a4 looks pretty good. Let's just play that. Uh, now, if he ever moves his knight off of this square, we have knight to b3, and he's not able to move these pawns. So, next steps. In most positions, we should consider this bishop takes d4, going for the knight versus bishop endgame, because we should be favored in a lot of these endgames, given the closed nature of the position. Knight to b5 is a good move. Uh... He's threatening to come in over here, maybe do some damage, but we do have some rook lift ideas, rook to c6. And now we might be coming over to b6 with our rook. So that looks pretty promising. Uh, bishop to e7 tricks don't really work because I just move my rook. And uh, if my opponent captures the knight, I can always capture it back. All right, knight to a7. He's really trying to trap in his own knight there. I guess his idea is if rook b6, he has this fork. So I'll just go rook to a6. And now if he goes back to b5, which he probably will, uh, now I'll just swing my other rook over to c8. And we cannot complain about our position. Uh, rook to b6 is coming. That's a pretty good threat for for me, just putting the rook on this B file and getting ready to take the B2 pawn. So, for example, let's say our opponent plays like some random move, then now we play rook B6, the knight moves, and we take the pawn. All right, bishop to E7, looking for a trade. Let's actually respond with bishop F8. Uh, I like trading the bishops here. He, he clearly doesn't like that. <laughs> he doesn't go for it. But now we'll go rook b6. And our opponent has to retreat the knight somewhere, probably back to d4. And then we can scoop up this pawn right here. And the more pawns we can scoop up, the easier it'll be for us to win. Rook to b1 looks pretty good. Uh, just trying to trade pieces. Not sure if I want to go for that trade. Uh, even though when you're up in material, you should trade. There's some situations in which uh, you can break those rules. Okay, my opponent wants some tactics. 
He's hoping I don't see it. But I am sorry, Mr. Surge J21. I do see it. Knight to d7 looks pretty good. Just hitting the bishop. And he likely has to move this bishop back somewhere. Uh, g5 and h4 are both good squares. And now c4 is falling. What is he going to do? He might give up a piece. Just take the pawn. That's one possibility, although doesn't look very promising, honestly. Uh, what else? Are there any good knight discoveries? Pretty much wherever he moves the knight, if he moves it, I can take his bishop. So he doesn't have very many good knight discoveries. I think his best shot is bishop back to h4. I just take his pawn, and now maybe some sort of bishop f2. Okay, he just resigns. Uh, yeah, this is a tough position. He uh, he has to do something with this bishop, otherwise he's going to lose it. Um, and then I just pick up the c4 pawn. But even more than that, even more important than that is the fact that there are some tactics along the this diagonal right here. So let me try to show that. First of all, okay, it says minus seven here. That's that's a tough look for my opponent. But so the first thing to note is anywhere he moves this knight, he won't be creating a good enough threat. Uh, so let's say he goes knight b5. I can just take his bishop. The piece that was giving a discovery is no longer giving a discovery because I can take it. Uh, the other important factor is after he moves his bishop somewhere, now we have rook takes c4 just scooping up a pawn, and there will inevitably be tactics on this diagonal because anytime your opponent pushes his f pawn, he is landing himself in some trouble over here on this diagonal. So let me provide an example. Let's say bishop f2, safe and solid, bishop c5, lining up on this diagonal for some tactics. Now let's say our opponent goes g3 or something like that. Now we already have some tactics that we can do. Uh, Probably the most important one is rook takes f2, just sacrificing the exchange. And the reason is because this bishop was the most important protector of this knight. So once we sacrifice the rook takes takes, uh, we can just snap with the rook. And after takes takes, we have this pin on the king. Once we scoop up the rook, we will just be up a clear knight and three pawns. So that is an easy win. Uh, going back earlier in the game, let's see, pr probably my opponent's opening strategy of putting the knight on c3 was not very good. Uh, usually in these Karo Khan positions, you don't want to put the knight in front of your c-pawn because you want the c-pawn to move either to c3, supporting the d-pawn, or to c4. Uh, and we saw that white didn't really have much play here, just because of this knight on c3, he wasn't able to create action in the center, which is what he desperately needed. So as the game went on, black just played solidly, and center pawns fall, uh, and white is just suddenly lost. Alright, let's see if we can get another one. Uh, let's go for another 10-0 game. Okay, this time we have Mosen Ayad 4, a uh, 2000 rated player. And I am 2082 question mark. Uh, let's go for the Karo Khan again, see what he does. Another exchange variation. One of the reasons I play the Karo Khan, by the way, is it, you get some French-like positions, similar to the French, except the exchange variation is not that annoying in the Karo Khan. It's much more annoying in the French. Okay, my opponent goes for this knight e5. Reminds me of the apocalypse variation where white goes like e4, knight f3, takes, and knight e5 right away. Let's go bishop d7. Uh, just give up this bishop. Let him take. And he might be running into some trouble if he just lets me take this knight because... This is a really common tactic where you can take something on e5, your opponent takes, and you take back with that same knight. So he wisely 
does not fall for that. He goes for knight takes d7. All right, castles. And now I could play on the queen side here with a6, uh, or I could just try to get castled. It's probably way too slow to go for this g6 idea, uh, just because we're going to have to end up protecting e6. So I'll just go, or sorry, we're, we're going to have to end up protecting d5. So I'll just go e6, c3, okay. a6 looks pretty good. Um, bishop d6 also good. Might just go bishop d6, okay. My opponent doesn't really want to give up this bishop for the knight anyways. So I'm not really sure how much a6 helps us. It's just helping him go back to d3. Now I'll just castle. And this is kind of like the exchange QGD for anyone who plays the Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, or sorry, who plays the Queen's Gambit with white. This should remind you of that structure where... Uh, this is like the reverse version of that where we have the... Uh, e and D pawns and our opponent has the C and D pawns except the one difference here is that our opponent has the two bishops so that usually doesn't happen in the Queen's Gambit declined for black bishop e3 that's not a very good square for that bishop there's nothing I can really do about it I'll just play a6 pre-move this capture not sure if he wants to take that knight so he doesn't now b5, and we play this typical idea. Uh, it's called the minority attack, if you're familiar with it, going for this b4. Uh, white is playing for checkmate, looks like. Queen to d3 and queen to h7. I don't think that's going to work, but we do have to do something about that. How about rook to c8? That looks pretty promising. Then we deal with queen to d3. Okay, rook to c8, queen d3, b4, and maybe our opponent has bishop g5, even though after bishop g5, he runs into some problems after knight e4, because he has to do something with this bishop. I think rook c8 is, is good enough, really, for this position. And bishop g5 can almost always be met with this knight e4. Uh... He does it right away, though, which is interesting. Now maybe dropping back is best. Bishop to e7. Now we're ready to meet queen d3 with just the simple g6. Rather, we almost have to. So bishop takes, bishop takes. All good so far. Queen to h5. He's going for some mating attack, but we just have g6. This idea is most common in the Scandinavian uh, defense, which is e4, d5 on the first move, where black goes for this structure. He puts his bishop on e7, and then it makes its way to g7 eventually. Uh, okay, queen to f3. I think bishop to g7 is best. Just keeping our bishop on this diagonal. And one of the ideas behind doing this is, let's say we eventually get in b4, right? If he ever takes, this center pawn is way too weak. So in fact, we can go for this b4 right now. And we're going to try and chip away at this structure, uh, which looks very solid. But in reality, after we go a5, a4, a3, it's looking a little more suspect. So he goes for this bishop a4, and now he's coming back to trade my knight. Uh, still don't think this position is very good for him. We can always hold off on taking this. Remember in chess, it's often very important to keep the pressure. You'll hear that phrase a lot, keep the tension, keep the tension. Uh, so we don't really want to release the tension, giving our opponent the B file to play on. Instead, it's possible to go for just queen d6, unpinning ourselves. If he takes our knight, we can just take back with the rook. Uh, keep the C file. Okay, we'll just take back with the rook. So we keep the file, and now we're getting ready for rook a to c8. Just playing very simply. Logically, there are only two half-open files in this position, right? There's the C file, white has a pawn there, and there's the E file, black has a pawn there. So all the play should really be centered around these files. So white should be playing on the E file and black should be playing on the C file. Um, okay, our opponent is going for this interesting idea. Knight to C5 is what he wants. 
pretty common in the Queen's Gambit decline too. We don't really want to do any sacrifices just yet, probably. Uh, just because there's really no need. Maybe we can go Rook to C8, Knight C5, and then Queen all the way back to B8. Preparing for Bishop F8 and still keeping an eye on our B4 pawn. That looks like a pretty good approach. Uh, although we do have to be a little bit careful there just for for some 97 ideas. Okay, what's the best way to play this? Maybe rook b8, knight c5, queen c7. That looks pretty good. And now bishop f8 is coming. Okay, let's just go for this. Not spend too much time on one move. Knight a5 is also possible, but it's really just a waste of a move. Uh, just because our opponent wants to be on c5. Our opponent's knight wants to be on c5. Knight a5, I can just move my rook somewhere, and his knight's eventually going to get kicked off of the square. Not a very good idea for him. Okay, so he does go knight c5, and now this is a very powerful knight, and our bishop isn't looking so hot here. So we're going to have to try to exchange that knight off. Let's go queen c7. And now our idea is bishop f8, and snap the knight off the board. Pretty simple play here. Uh, our opponent doesn't really have too many ideas. I guess it might be possible for him to try to play on the queen side. Both sides really have to try to play on the queen side here. A3, I was thinking about this move, but I wasn't so sure about white's prospects after A3 because Let's say we take on c3. Now, queen takes just looks wrong. So he takes with the pawn. And now after bishop to f8, now we're asking some questions to this knight. What is, what is he going to do about this knight? Because if he moves to d3 or b3, we snap this pawn off with our rook. So the only move to protect the pawn is knight to a4. But now we get some enormous pressure with queen to a5. Uh, and actually, the knight is almost trapped there after knight a4, queen a5. Knight a4, queen a5, and now he has to go back to d1 with his queen. So he's almost getting trapped here. Uh, okay, let's just go queen a5. Now our opponent has to play this queen d1, I believe. Or he can just go back and concede the pawn but after queen d1 he's sort of struggling for play and actually queen d1 there's rook c4 and we're just putting more pressure on this knight and now he has to give up the pawn so our opponent might as well just play knight c5 here give up the pawn admit that the knight on the rim is dim as they say uh Okay, he does give up the pawn, takes, and now after he takes, let's take back with our rook so that we keep putting pressure on this c3 point. And now just like in the last game, you'll see uh, one similarity is that we, uh, we have these two center pawns, and that happens sometimes in the Karokan where you get positions where your opponent doesn't have any center pawns, and you have both of yours, and... Sometimes, due to the queenside pressure, you're just up a straight pawn. Okay, our opponent wants tricks, so if we go rook to c8, he's going to come in uh, rook to b7, try to create some threats on this. We don't really want to give him that counterplay, so let's trade a pair of rooks. And now I'm thinking queen takes c3. Just snap off this pawn. And it doesn't look like it's getting very dangerous, because he can give a check. We just go up, uh, and we have this whole diagonal protected, this h8 to a1 diagonal. So we just go king to g7 and ask our opponent what he's going to do here. So he probably shouldn't trade queens, because if he trades queens, he's just going to be losing in this endgame down two soon-to-be three pawns. Uh, so he has to save the queens, keep the queens on the board. 
But then, then there's some tactics. So let's say there's queen e2. Now we go queen c1 check, king h2, queen f4 check, g3, and queen takes b8. So his rook hangs at the end of this line. Uh, and this is a big problem for him. And if he goes anywhere else, like d1, now we just force the queen trade. Simple as that. Uh, we have some other options there to play for more, but Karpov always liked those simple endgames. So our opponent plays queen e2 like we thought, and now we just have a simple win with queen to c1. Uh, his other option of queen f1 trading queens also losing, uh, I can show that afterwards. But now, simple queen f4 check gets the job done. Uh, he goes g3, probably doesn't realize his rook is hanging. Uh, and now he doesn't even have any checks. B2 and E5 are both protected. And he resigns. Okay. Let's see what happened there. Let's go to analysis. So, started off with another Karo Khan. And he goes for this interesting Bishop B5 check. I'm not sure about this. The main line here is just Bishop D3. Uh, and after Knight C6, a lot of my opponents play like this. C3. And some take, bishop takes f5, g takes f5. Uh, this is the idea I was referring to earlier, where you give yourself doubled pawns intentionally in order to take control of this e4 square. Uh, for example, if white plays rook e1, this is the most natural square for the rook uh, on the open file, on the half open file. But after e6, I've had some games that have gone like this. Bishop to f4, let's just do some more trades. Knight to d2. Now black can come in with this knight e4, and suddenly white has some unexpected problems. Uh, if he takes, we just take back with our pawn, let's say knight d2, and castles queenside. And between the two sides, black's attack is much faster. Mm, I've had some games here, my opponents can go a4, but there's just way too much pressure that black has here with f5, f4, f3 is coming. Rook g8, doubling on the g file is coming, uh, and it's just too much. So, if both sides go for their respective attacks... Okay, knight a5 is thematic, but not necessary. Just knight e7, and we can see that black is definitely quicker. Here, uh, we're going to have like f4 ideas. Let's just say f4 here, and we're even going to be able to sacrifice a whole piece. I'll just show that line. So let's just say rook c1. Uh, okay. We could probably just take this. And we have rook sacrifice ideas with inevitable mate. So white can't really go for this. Uh, in the game, he goes for bishop b5 check. And I just block with the knight. And he goes for this knight e5. Sometimes when your opponent puts their bishop on b5 early in the game, watch out for these tricks. You might have these tricks queen to a5. Uh, in this position, we don't have the trick because our opponent can go knight to c3, defending the bishop. But in some positions, you have it. Okay, bishop d7. Now I'll show the idea that I was talking about if my opponent castles here. Now we can play knight takes e5, and this is a nice tactical idea to know. Knight takes e5. If our bishop gets taken, we don't take back with the queen, but we take back with the same knight, and suddenly we're up a piece. Uh, and, okay, let's say castles, knight e5, d e5, now we take the bishop, and take the rook. And we emerge out of this mess up in exchange. And, common idea, we have the two center pawns. Okay, so the game continued. Um, we have opposite colored bishops, but don't be intimidated by opposite colored bishops in middle games because those middle games are definitely not draws. I'm just realizing that I missed a tactic here. I played b4 going for this thematic minority attack, but I think I actually have knight takes d4 here, just the simple knight takes d4. It's a fork between the queen and the bishop. If he takes with the pawn, I just take this. And this is much better than what I actually got in the game because d4 is loose, b2 is weak, and we already have a rook infiltrating on the second rank. And when you have a rook on the second, that usually spells danger for your opponent.
So knight e4 was uh, definitely in the spirit of the position. But b4 is still good, and this bishop versus knight ending, uh, the knight on c5 was good. So the first idea that should come to mind here is how to exchange that knight. Just queen c7 and bishop f8 stopped the knight off the board, and he tried to save his knight because he thought it was better in this position. And now queen a5 just does the trick, but there are some other moves that are also very good. Rook to b3 attacking this pawn, and now queen a5 really threatens the knight uh, in an even worse way. So all of those are ideas, but what happened in the game was more than enough. And what I wanted to show here was uh, this ending is completely lost because not only are we going to be up two pawns, we'll be up three pawns. And the way to do this is if takes, takes. We're attacking his pawn. He has no way to defend it other than a3 to a4. And now instead of rook to a3 getting behind the pawn trying to take it, we go rook c4, hitting it again laterally. That way our opponent doesn't have the option of rook b4. Only way to defend is a5, and again rook c5, same idea, scooping up the pawn. So our opponent was kind of hopeless there. He blunders with queen e2, just losing the rook. Easy tactic to miss. Uh, not, not such a problem. Our opponents uh, only 2,000 rated. These things, these things happen. All right, let's jump back in the pool. See what we can do. 10-0 rapid. Once we get enough of these 10-0 rapid games, we can even join an arena. So that's exciting. Okay, we have the white pieces finally. What to go for? Let's try pawn to d4. Okay, he goes pawn to d5, and now I like to play knight f3. Uh, c4 is completely completely good and all, but I just like to avoid these Alpen counter gambits. I have a surprisingly low score in these Alpen counter gambit lines, even though it is a borderline refuted opening. Uh, I just haven't bothered to refute it. <laughs> uh, this is the Catalan, one of my favorite openings. Okay, bishop b4 check. I recently learned an idea here where instead of bishop d2, you can just go knight c3. Let's see if our opponent knows what to do here. Uh, castling is normal, bishop g2. And now he should take this guy. Knight e4 is a little strange. Um, there are a couple ways to combat this. Queen c2 seems right. Queen b3 also seems right somehow uh my intuition is telling me queen to b3 just attack this bishop because now we're simultaneously attacking the bishop protecting our knight and defending this pawn so if our opponent takes on c4 in the future we're ready to recapture with the queen even though it's important to note that in these catalan lines oftentimes we'll let our opponent take on c4 and we don't have the intention of re of recapturing this pawn. Uh, we're just going to gambit it and go for uh, accelerated development and then attack on the king side sometimes. Okay, my opponent gives up the two bishops. I don't know about that choice. Uh, here the two bishops are pretty strong actually, even though it's a close center. Uh, this knight on e4 is obviously a good piece of, of our opponents, so I'm going to be looking to trade this knight off for one of my knights. Uh, but more importantly, we have the bishop pair, so we have to think of how to utilize it. Opening the center is very crucial for when you have the bishop pair, so somehow opening the center with some knight d2, e4. Uh, okay, c5. I don't think this is a very good move, because our opponent, the whole point of this play is he wants to keep a close center. He has the two knights, and I have the two bishops, so he really has no incentive to open the center. Uh, this can only favor me, so I'm just going to castle. Any exchanges in the center, we have those covered. Uh, D takes C4, I'll just take back with the queen. And C takes D4, I'll just take back with the pawn. And now my opponent has even graciously undoubled my pawns for me. And rook to D1 is coming. Okay, it's takes on C4. Again, not making the best choices for the, for the position. Uh... Because he has the knights and I have the bishops, he does not want to be making these exchanges. And as you'll notice, 
with no longer having this d5 pawn, my bishop on g2 now becomes a bit of a monster. Uh, there are no pawns that are in its way. So he goes knight c6, trying to put pressure in the center. Now, I think rook d1 is screaming out to be played. Just rook d1, and now we have some very legitimate threats of pawn to d5 just breaking things open. Uh, and in the Catalan, you'll often see that this bishop is a huge problem for, for black. It's not easy to deal with the, with the problems associated with this bishop. For example, any time he moves at this b7 pawn is weak. Okay, now we have to think of a new plan. So bishop to a3 is definitely in the spirit of the position, just hitting the rook. So bishop a3, rook moves, uh, bishop a3, rook moves, and now knight e5 seems powerful because now our rooks are connected, so there are no problems. If we go knight e5 right away, he can take, take, and our rook on d1 hangs. So we can't go for this, but after bishop a3, the a1 rook protects the d1 rook, so we can go for it. Uh, so let's see, bishop a3, rook e8, knight e5, queen a5 maybe. Hmm. That's definitely a valid try. But I think we should be okay there. We shouldn't really be running into too many problems. Uh, we can also go for some sort of central expansion, try to prepare e4, or even bishop g5. So bishop g5, creating a pin. If h6, can we go back? g5, takes, takes, takes. I think we must be able to do this, just because black is really in sort of a bind. But let's just play it safe. Bishop to a3 is more than enough here. We don't need to enter these complications. I do think my opponent should go for rook to e8, knight e5, oh oops, knight e5, and queen, oh oops, queen a5. Rook to e8 played. Let's go for our knight e5 idea. If he takes this knight, He's just getting himself in some more trouble because this d file will be really strong. I do think my opponent should go for queen a5 here. This has to be black's best try. Just counterattacking. So preparing to meet knight takes c6 with queen takes a3. And right off the bat, I don't see problems with doing this. It seems like this is what black should do uh yeah no problems right off the bat i do think that it would be wise to keep the bishop pair here though so after queen to a5 i don't want to take on c6 unless there's some tactical justification for doing so just because i don't want to go with the bishop pair are there tactics queen a5 bishop c6 takes takes and I'm not really forking these rooks because the knight on f6 defends the rook on e8. So it doesn't really look like we have a tactical justification for going for this. Queen a5, I think bishop d6 has to be strong. Just putting the bishop even further in black's position. And now knight takes c6 is a very real threat. Uh, our pawn goes knight e7 odd move because knight d5 isn't really threatened uh anytime our opponent goes knight d5 we just have e4 just pushing the knight away so i think something as simple as rook c1 is good we have a what what i like to describe as being spoiled by choices here kind of like we have a lot of good good moves that we could play rook c1 is good taking control of the c file Rook b1 is good, just because this b pawn is very weak. So we have a ton of choices here. We just have to decide which one we want to go for. Um, rook b1 is super tempting. I might have to do it. But rook c1 is also very strong. Okay. All right, just rook c1. Let's not waste too much time. 
making a move that's uh, going to be good anyways. The problem is ideally we want our rooks on b1 and c1, but I do want some extra protection of d4. Uh, it's not always necessary to, to do that, but in some positions, if he goes for some knight d5, e, oh, oops, knight d5, e4, uh, we might have d5 in the future, which is which is why the rook's on d1 for any potential d5 break. So he goes for this knight to d5, and now just e4 is strong. The only downside of e4 is we cut off this bishop's diagonal. So in chess, oftentimes you have to give something up to get something. In this case, we're giving up our uh, great scope of the bishop for control of the center, more control of the center. e4 looks very strong to me. Maybe he has queen a5, but that seems a little loose. Just putting the queen on a5 doesn't feel right. So he goes knight b6. Uh, I agree with this choice, but I think queen c7 has to be strong. And after queen c7, the queen trade definitely favors white. Uh, even though people say in close positions, uh, or sorry, in cramped positions, you want to trade pieces, meaning that black being in a very cramped position here would want to trade queens. Uh, I do agree with that, but at the same time, after the queen trade, black has some serious problems he needs to solve. For example, what's going to happen with this knight? Like, where's it going to go? King to f8 seems like it defends, but it's also it's also a bit loose there uh, because of this diagonal. So he might he might well play king f8, knight g6. I thought the problem with this was now I can go knight f7. Can I do this? Knight f7. Knight f7, and I don't see any way for him to kick my rook out. So this must be playable. If he had some way to kick my rook out of c7, then he'd be winning the knight on f7, and that'd be very bad for me. Uh, but since I just don't see it in this position, uh, I'm just going to go for it. Now we have some very strong ideas of knight d6, and he's in huge trouble if I get in knight d6. Okay, he allows it. Knight d6 is a big problem for black, because look at this bishop. I was saying earlier that one of Black's problems is that this bishop on c8 can't move easily. And we're seeing evidence for that right now. This uh, bishop is almost completely trapped. So he goes rook b8. Uh, can we just go rook c1 and keep piling on? That looks right. And again, this bishop is just a huge problem for, for Black. Uh, so knight b6 must be played. Either that or 97, but 97, he's running into this bishop uh, over here. So what's he going to do about that? Yeah, this this position just seems horrific for black. Uh, he's just, all his pieces are loose. I think e5 is just dominating. e5. Can that be played? Just opening up this bishop. And just look at the minor pieces here. White has a bishop on a3, knight on uh, d6, and bishop on g2. And this spells spells trouble for our opponent. So he goes knight c6, uh, actually probably one of the best moves in the position, just because um, black is dealing with such heavy pressure that he wants to trade off his bad knight for a good bishop. We can allow it. Uh, yeah, it's it's fine to allow this uh, just because we have such an overwhelming position anyways. Are there good uh, alternatives? Maybe rook takes c6 is strong. Rook c6, b c6, bishop c6, rook b8 takes 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 lots of taking 
That looks very strong too. Rook c6 just sacrificing the exchange. It's a bit of a risk, but it's a comfortable risk. We have a pretty overwhelming position, so it, it should be completely fine. Okay, so we can go for this takes takes. Now um, rook b8 should be played. And here I was thinking I can get two bishops for the rook after taking right here. Can I do that? Looks like I can. So just knight c8 maybe? Knight c8. And getting ready for knight e7. Knight c8 looks right to me. So we take on c8. If he takes, he's losing the knight on d7. That's not good. He does take. Okay, so we just take. And we can take this knight on d7 next. And now we're hitting the rook on c8 and the pawn on e6. And he doesn't have any check down here. So he probably has to go for some active play rook c2. But we just take this pawn. And importantly, our bishop defends the a2 pawn. So we don't actually have to do anything about that. Uh, we can just leave it there. And now we're attacking his pawn. He has to do something about that. Uh, bishop b3 just stepping back, getting ready to push. If he goes rook e2, we have the sneaky king f1 hitting the rook. Okay, so he goes there. Now we come up with our king. e6, uh, or sorry, g6, just push with e6. And our opponent is too slow. He is not fast enough. Bishop to a4 coming. And now we promote. And there's nothing he can do about it. Okay, now we just pre-move our way to victory. a3, solid. Okay, black resigns. See what happened there. All right, so we had a Catalan, d4, d5, knight f3. What I was talking about earlier is c4 right away is fine. It allows the, or it's like the most common move here. It allows the uh, queen's gambit accepted, and it allows the Alpen counter gambit. Uh, so I just go knight f3 because I play knight f3 against the Slav anyways. Uh, so knight f6, and... If your opponent tries to take advantage of this move order by playing some bishop g4 or something like that, uh, first of all, he's giving away control of the center. We can just take this pawn. But possibly more importantly, we can take advantage of the weakness of b7. Uh, if the bishop leaves its post on c8, oftentimes we can go for this queen b3 attacking b7 let's just see what happened okay so knight e4 oh wow okay so here it turns out queen b3 is a bit of an inaccuracy uh just because castles works so how does this line work doesn't this give up a pawn castles uh knight takes c3 b takes c3 bishop c3 rook b1 Oh, just giving a full pawn. This is the idea. Giving up the doubled C pawn. Queen C2, C6. Knight G5. Very strong move. Uh, the threat being Queen takes H7 checkmate. Uh, G6 is not a good way to deal with this because you're giving up all the dark squares. And if you notice, uh, Black's Bishop all the way over here has deserted its king. So any G6 move, Bishop to h6 eventually will be very powerful. So the computer here recommends f5. Uh, let's see. Let's load stockfish. Now bishop f4. And we're kind of playing the stonewall structure, except white has all his pieces developed. Black doesn't have the knight on f3, f f6 that can jump to e4. Just a much better position for white. Okay, but queen b3 was played. And now you'll see that the computer does not like c5. It, uh, it says c5 was a mistake and gives it a question mark. 
it goes from slightly better for black to uh, much better for white in this one move. And that's because of the reason that I explained that here, if you have the two knights, you want to play a very closed game. You don't want to open the center. So by playing c5, he's opening the position for my two bishops to become good. Uh, instead, knight c6, which the computer recommends, and I'll turn it off briefly, has the idea of controlling the queen side and keeping the position closed. So first of all, there's a, there's a tactical threat. If we just castle, we're running into knight to a5, attacking the queen and the pawn. So this is not good. We're just going to end up losing the pawn and, and probably losing the game too because these knights are monsters. So we have to deal with this. I'd probably take. Now, importantly, uh, black should take back with the pawn. If he takes back the qu with the queen, we have the same problem of the center is too open. This bishop becomes a, a monster. So he should take back with the pawn here. Uh, and after that, probably castles. And black can go for this same sort of idea uh, of knight a5. So knight a5, queen back to c2. And now I actually like b6. I used to play these Nimzo positions a lot. Uh, and b6 was pretty strong just to go bishop a6. But black doesn't even have to put the bishop there. He can go bishop f5 too, eyeing down this queen. And we can see how black's position just springs to life so quickly. Uh, and it's a close center, so the knights are good. c3 is weak too. So this would have been the way to play for him. I guess queen b3 is a bit inaccurate. Next time I'll remember to castle. Uh, the idea in this line though, this knight c3 line, is... After black takes, it's common to try to hang on the onto the pawn by playing this knight c6, rook b8, b5 idea. Uh, you see this in the Catalan mainline, even with bishop e7. Uh, but here white goes a3, and there's a game here between Magnus Carlsen and Mickey Adams. And it's when Carlsen was very young, I think he was like 13 years old. And uh, the idea that he plays here is bishop g5 and it's been played after that since then too there's a game where i think it was in archive that played white h6 uh and g5 or maybe it was salem Saleh. uh either way this is the idea and e4 now and black is just completely hopeless uh it's very hard to get out of this uh this e5 move F4 is coming. It's just a it's just a really bad position. So black can play, let's say, queen e8. And now he's already running into some trouble. Let me see if I can find a precise way to end it. Uh, e5 honestly looks good enough. If knight d5, we could just take, take, bishop to f6. King g8 and queen h5 with unstoppable mate on h8. So black can't really do this. Um, that's the idea behind this line. So in the game, my opponent goes for this line, queen b3. Uh, and now the center opens all of a sudden. We go from a completely closed center just a few moves ago to a completely open center. Uh and what I mean by this is the bishop just has no pawns blocking it. So this all happened. Bishop a3. I was thinking my opponent should go for queen a5 here maybe. Uh, just intending to meet knight takes c6 with queen takes a3. And I didn't see anything concrete here. Let's see if the computer has a response to queen to a5. Just bishop b2. Okay, yeah, just retain the advantage. There's no tactic here. I was going to go bishop d6, uh, which is about the same thing. And uh, same idea, just keep the bishop pair in the open position. After knight to e7, the computer already evaluates this as plus 2.6, which means that white is up zero pawns right now, but the position is so good that it's almost as if white is up three pawns. So let's just see how it continued. Queen c7. I think e4 is right. Let's see if the computer agrees. Okay, the computer does agree. I was talking here about trading advantages. Uh, 
trading the scope of the bishop for the control of the center. And that's exactly what the computer wants, knight b6. And queen to c7, uh, also the computer's best move. Because, like I was saying here, black wants to trade. He's cramped. But after queen c7, black deals with very concrete positional problems. So there's this quote. I don't remember who said it, but it's, uh, it's something along the lines of, we spend the first half of our chess careers learning all these rules, chess rules, and then the second half unlearning them. So don't trade queens when you have the initiative and your opponent is cramped. That's a chess rule. But there are obviously exceptions. And this is one of them where black deals with very concrete problems. This knight is in big trouble. It's already plus four, and I'm not even up a single pawn. So it continues like this. Uh, and now let's see what the computer thinks of e5. Uh, Bishop h3 is stronger. Okay. So it doesn't want to concede any of these central squares. It doesn't want to weaken d4. It doesn't want to give up d5. It just wants bishop h3. And that's a very good move because bishop takes e6 is unstoppable. Black can't really do anything about this. If he moves the knight anywhere to defend it, the knight on e7 hangs. So this is a really big problem. Uh, h6, just bishop e6. This is completely winning. Okay, let's move on. Let's play again. Another 10-0 game. Let's get that question mark away from our rating. All right, d4. We finally have a d4. Let's go for the Dutch defense. One of my, my probably my favorite opening uh, against d4. So our opponent goes for c4, and we can just go knight to f6 uh, and e6. So there are some very interesting games here, uh, Richard Report games after knight to f3, but our opponent just goes g3. Uh, okay, now should we go for the stone wall or the classical? Let's choose the classical Dutch this game. I have a I have a feeling that that's the right choice. Let's play a more a more uh, flexible pawn structure. So maybe our opponent wants to go e4. No, he just goes for knight f3. So we reach the classic classical Dutch position after castles, and there are many moves here. Uh, a5, knight c6 playable, queen e8. I like knight e4, though. Simon Williams recommends this, too. Uh, the Ginger GM, very popular YouTuber. And now the idea is uh, after queen c2, which most of my opponents play, we can go for a5. All right, so white plays this queen to b3. And I'm not 100% sure of queen b3. Now, a5 seems very powerful. Unless white's trying to get in some c5. I don't think c5 should work, though. So if we... Okay, if we take on c3, is he going to take with the pawn? So, okay. a5. c5. And takes all right let's just take this knight uh don't really want to deal with any of the c5 nonsense he takes with the pawn so he's insisting on c5 let's go a5 just to, to create the a4 threat i think white should probably address this white might play a4 here just to stop me from playing a4 uh okay he goes c5 now i think a4 might work and he's gone for this. All right. So I, I don't really want all this pressure against my king on this diagonal. So I might just play king h8, step out of it. Uh, but white's definitely doing okay here. He can take, just take, he undoubles his pawns, but at the same time, uh, I get the c file too. So that's bittersweet. He does do it. I'm not sure I... 
agree with this decision just because now I have the C file to play on, like I said. Uh, next idea is probably knight, sorry, knight C6. We just have to be ready to meet D5. That's sort of the quintessential idea of the classical Dutch that you want to get in the E5 break. Uh, but at the same time, you also have to be ready to meet D5 with E5. So, for example, in this position, we are ready to do that. Uh, we're ready to meet D5 with E5. But in some positions, uh, we have to be a little more careful. So bishop a3, putting pressure on d6, pretty good idea by my opponent. Now can we go knight c6? That's the question. Knight c6, d5, knight a5, queen takes a4, and e5. Can we do this? It seems like a powerful threat, pawn sacrifice to open the rook's file. Uh... And I, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth giving up that little pawn. In the spirit of Simon Williams, we uh, we can't be worried about these little pawns. We also have some tactical ideas. So, for example, if he takes at some point and I play b5, getting ready for bishop a6, uh, that's one idea. Okay, rook, rook b1, very solid move. I might be able to get away with bishop d7 here now. Bishop d7, if he takes, we have a little tactic, knight a5. So he can't really take. If d5, we have the same knight a5. And I don't see a way for him to put more pressure on d6. So I'm just going to go for bishop d7. Uh, and now, admittedly, the black position feels a little bit loose here. Uh, for example, white can go for some queen b5. And this might be strong. Um... Some, some pretty good options for white here. Putting pressure on, on, on um, the square. Even though uh, not right away, queen b5 is only a future threat, it's not a current threat. Because after queen b5, we have the simple knight takes d4 tactic. So not much there. Let's see what our opponent's going to do. Uh, e4 is very thematic. That's an idea that uh, that he, our opponent should really want to get in. So h4. I'm now realizing that my opponent has some serious tactical problems that revolve around the move d5. So if I can somehow play this d5 and try to win this bishop, that would be ideal. Right now I can't do it because d5, bishop takes e7. And if I take the queen, he takes my queen. So I can't do this right now, but I can go queen e8, sidestepping. I just have to be careful that I'm not totally abandoning the, the queen side here. Unless that's what I need to do in order to try and claim an advantage. I think queen e8 is solid. Our opponent obviously intends this knight g5 idea. Uh, with h4, he's he's sort of showing his cards that I want to go knight g5. Uh, it may be good, it may not be. In this position, it definitely isn't, because that allows our, our d5 tactic. But in some positions, it's playable. He might also be stopping g5, even though I don't know how worried white should be about g5. Just because it exposes the king, and this diagonal might prove to be dangerous in the future. So, uh, not sure if white, white really had to stop g5. He's probably thinking about this tactic right now. I think white's best move is, is probably queen to d3. He does go knight g5. Do I just have this tactic now? Pawn to d5. Pawn d5. Queen moves. Take the bishop. Okay, pawn to d5. Queen b5, just take the bishop. Takes. Now we're just winning two pieces, so he doesn't want to do that. d5 seems to work. I don't see anything for him. 
he has no way to randomly swing his queen around to deliver mate, so knight g5 doesn't really do anything to stop d5. Um, and now I'm just threatening to take this bishop. So let's see what white does. Um, not too many, not too many options here. So he goes for this. Interesting. Giving up the queen. So it's a queen for a rook, though, which is just dead lost. I think he probably should have gone for a counterplay instead of giving the queen like this. But maybe he does have some play. But I'm not, I'm not convinced. I think, uh, I think. He's definitely lost here. How to finish it off. So he wants to double with rook to b1. Uh, he's also threatening he's also threatening this knight. Uh, we definitely can't go queen d8 or queen to d6 because those both allow this uh, knight to f7 check. So what to do? Queen c8 looks promising in fact i might go for it queen c8 okay queen c8 queen c8 rook b1 this might be a little trickier than i first thought uh even though it's, it's winning i just have to just have to find it queen e8 also good Queen e8, probably. If rook b1, just h6. And we're going to try to trade down here. We need to trade some of our opponent's pieces. Uh, and the closer we get to a queen versus rook ending, the closer we'll be to a victory. So let's see what happens. Uh, rook b1 is probably strong. Okay, rook b1, h6 was my idea. Now he might have bishop c6. This is what I'd play as white. Bishop c6, bishop c6, knight f7, king moves, and now the knight can occupy these dark squares, 90, or sorry, knight d6 at the end of the line. Uh, honestly, I should be fine there if he gives me the light squares though, because there could be some mating threats on these light squares near his king. So I'll pre-move bishop takes c6, just to see him cool. Uh, and we'll see what happens. If he goes back knight f3, I should be prepared for that too. He does go back knight f3. Rook b8 offers to trade, and offering to trade seems like the right approach. Trading my bad rook for one of his good ones, uh, and getting closer to that victory. If the more we can trade, the closer we are to victory, the finish line. And luckily there are no back rank threats now, because h6 created this, what they call Luft square for the king. That's the first German word I learned. Luft. That and Zugzwang. Uh, but luckily he has no no back rank mates, meaning we can uh, we can just trade down and go for a simplified easy ending. Ninety five. All right, ninety five was played. So 
now I can chop this knight eventually after rook takes b7. Uh, okay, rook b7. Rook b7, rook b7, 95. This this has to be winning. We can just go for this. Um, yeah, there are uh, no problems here. So knight takes e5. And now after d takes e5, bishop to c6 trades the um, trades the bishop. So bishop c6. And what's our opponent going to do? Let's find out. Okay, rook b6. Now we can play this. Uh, now we can play this bishop g2. Okay, so white uh, white doesn't have much here. We just have to convert this. So what's our conversion strategy? Uh, when I was trying to get to to national master, one of the things that I really had to work on were was my uh, conversion. So I used to just blow good positions all the time just because I wasn't converting them properly but it's just a necessary skill that you have to learn if you want to make NM uh, converting winning positions in this case it's very easy uh, I won't pretend like it's it's uh, such a task in this position but in other positions you really do have to know how to convert them so rook d6 we can go queen a5 Idea being, we're attacking this pawn, attacking this pawn, and if he takes on e6, he falls to queen d5, and we get another king and rook fork. So, uh, he can't do that. He goes f4, and now, let's just, should we just uh, take on c3? Okay, we just take on c3, now he can take on e6, but we can run this pawn all the way down the board, so... Okay, rook e6. Let's go queen e3. I think queen e3 is powerful because uh, we're attacking this pawn and we're supporting this guy in his mission to become a queen. Okay, rook e8 is king h7 and c3. He has to go rook c8. Okay, rook c8. Should I be greedy? Just take this. Just the the most greed possible instead of promoting. Take the pawns. Check. I will call check on my opponent. Queen d2. Check. This is how you win chess games. You just keep calling check and eventually it'll be checkmate. C2 with the idea that C1 comes with check, so he can't uh, can't stop me from queening and picking up his pawn. Mr. Ricky Dharmawan. King G2, now queen E3 back, and I will be scooping up this one. I will pre-move queen E8. Okay. He, uh... He goes, uh, he goes down here. Let's uh, let's go for a new opponent. We get plus thirty nine. Pretty strong, uh, strong result there. I'm happy with that. Let's keep this rolling. Okay, we get white again against Andrea Locks twenty two ninety two. So this will be a tough one. Uh, let's see if we can cross 2200. We will with a win. Okay, so d5, let's go for knight f3 again. Because, like I mentioned, I don't want to allow any of this Alpen counter gambit stuff. 
Bishop g4. So this is what I was mentioning before, that if black goes for this, they might find themselves in trouble quickly. Knight e5, and bishop back. Ooh, bishop e6. That's so strange. Can I punish this? c4. And f6 is just too obscure. f6, knight, f3. And now c6. This is this is very odd. I'm not sure what my opponent's doing here, but maybe she has an idea. So takes, and now I think e4 is strong. Commonly in these queen's gambit positions, you want to play for the center. So you want to play for d4 and e4, uh, and then see what happens from there. Uh, all right, bishop f7. Uh, I, I'm down playing that for sure. You, you don't just see what happens. There are plenty of ideas that one would employ in this sort of position. So this is a bit odd because the knight's not out, and the bishop has come back to f7 where it likely should not be. So how can I take advantage of this? Maybe white is, sorry, maybe black is planning to play b5. Uh, we probably could allow that, honestly. It doesn't seem like that big a deal. Allowing, allowing b5 is not that much of a problem, but maybe we could just stop it just in case. Uh, okay, let's go a4. Just let's stop, uh, let's stop this b5. And uh, our idea now is we, we just want to scoop on on the, on c4 in the in the future. So we also have the idea of a5, uh, a6 in some endings. So that's uh, another plan to keep in mind. Knight a6 is a strong move by my opponent, eyeing the b4 square, meaning that I should try to get castled as quickly as possible because I don't want to. I don't want to allow any knight d3 check, forcing a trade of the bishop for the knight in this position. Possibly my opponent will go for some sort of rook b8, knight c7, b5, but that would just be investing way too much energy on that side of the board. Okay, knight h6. I'm very tempted to just take this. Uh, where is black's king going to find shelter if I just take this? Okay, takes, takes. Very, very bold by my opponent. So I'll just castle. I want to get safe before going for anything. I was also considering knight h4, which I may play now, uh, with the idea of bishop to h5, and that looks strong, so I'll go for knight h4. Uh, bishop h5 just has the idea of prying open my opponent's king. So let's say my opponent goes e5. Okay, he goes. she goes b5. That's just fine as well. Now, should I take first before going bishop h5? Takes, takes. Okay, takes, 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 takes. Let's leave pieces on the board. Our, our knight on c3 is better than our opponent's knight on c7. So let's go for this bishop h5. Uh, putting, on, putting a piece on h5 is a very thematic idea. Uh, when your opponents have these really weak pawns on h6 and h7. Um, all right, now I can take that guy on f7. Maybe I can do some fancy tactics, take this first, takes, 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 check, takes, check, and then I pick up the knight on b5 at the end of the variation. But is that too fancy for my own good, is the question. Is that too fancy for my own good? Do I have a better alternative? T takes, check, king e7. Possibly this is the best. So I'll take that. And just to perplex my opponent, I'll take again. And now take on f7. If, okay, I was going to say if she doesn't allow me to do this tactic, then my bishop on f7 would be way too powerful. So I come scoop this up, and now can my opponent be greedy? Probably not. Queen b6 runs into rook d, or sorry, queen uh d4 runs into rook d1, 
queen b6 might be good. Queen b6, maybe I should just scoop up this pawn. Uh, maybe my opponent should go for queen b6, because this rook right now is immobilized, because rook a7 is a threat. King to f7. This seems incorrect. I'm tempted to go for some d5, but maybe just scooping up the c4 pawn is good enough. Honestly, might be. Might be just enough. Shouldn't get overly greedy, though. So, is this the most accurate way to play? Queen takes... I guess I have some time to play d5 now. Like, I don't have to do it right away. I could take... But d5 eventually is very powerful because it blasts open this uh, king side. Knight to f5 is going to be very powerful soon. So my opponent, queen c8, I think, should be played. Oh, queen c8, rook a7. Queen c8, rook a7 was possible. So she, in fact, could not do that. Okay, bishop d6, e5 is jumping out. Is e5 right or is it wrong? d5 also good. So e5 takes, takes, takes. Do I have a follow-up? It's just a very powerful position. I don't necessarily need a follow-up there, honestly. Maybe e5 takes d5. Ooh. I'm getting too carried away, though. I should stop enjoying my position and go for the kill. So d5 is, is powerful, no question. But e5 just seems seems like it, it has to be very good. I'll go for e5. This pawn sacrifice seems like it's the right move. Uh, if, he, if she takes a bunch of times, I think I have rook e1 at the end. And rook e1 might cause problems. So it takes... What should I do on bishop e5, actually? Maybe rook e1, there's queen d4. I didn't really think too much about that. Rook e1, queen d4... Oh, yeah, no, I, I shouldn't allow that. So let's go queen g4 for now. Intending mm, queen g4, queen g5. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe this was not that all that smart. Okay, rook e1. Queen d4, queen c6. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Rook d1, queen d4, knight f3. Oh, wow, wow. Rook, rook e1, queen d4, knight f3. Uh, queen takes c4, knight e5. That's very strong. Let's do this. I wonder if she sees it. Queen d4, knight f3. And now... Queen takes c4, knight e5. And even if he gives up the bishop, it doesn't matter. Queen d4, knight f3, bishop h2. We just take with the king, and the threat is still there, knight e5. Ooh. Well, she queen d4. I think this works. Oh, that's a sweet tactic. Knight f3. I think this goes to show that when you have a really overwhelming position... The tactics sort of come naturally. Like, I didn't necessarily set that up or anything. Uh, but because my position was overwhelming, I just had the tactic available to me. Uh, if you put all your pieces on the right squares, then you're inevitably going to have a, a tactical resource like that. So now let's convert. Conversion time. Let's create Luft, like I mentioned uh, last time. Luft, 
G3. How? What's the best way to create Luft? I like G3. I play a lot of G3 positions. King can come to G2. Generally pretty good approach uh, when you want to create Luft because H3 sometimes your king has to go the other way to H2. Uh, and then F2 can be targeted in some positions. Uh, in the grand scheme of things it might not matter but King G2 seems like the safest. If I want to take this pawn, I can go for rook f4 check, rook takes e6. One possibility. I'm thinking my opponent might go for this rook b4. So, if rook b4, can I just play knight d6? Rook b4, knight to d6. Okay. Knight d6 and now takes and rook takes e6 has to be good. Let's go for it. Knight to d6. Attacking the rook, attacking e6. Uh, I think rook takes e4 should be played, but rook takes uh, rook takes e4 also trades another rook, and my opponent is not really in much of a position to do that. What else can happen? So, rook b8 is possible, but that's just a rook trade a different way. So she goes for this, and rook to c2. Now I have a bit of a choice, so I can either go rook b4 to defend or rook e6. Actually, rook e6 rook b2, rook e8, king g7, rook e7, king f6, rook takes a7, and I just pick up the pawn. So he's losing the his a pawn this way too, which means I should go for this. So rook takes e6, rook b2, rook e8, king g7, rook e7, king f6, okay, king g6, same difference, and rook a7. Now, Andrea Locks might be in a tough position. Okay, rook d2. Let's see, knight c4. King g2. Let's just put the finishing touches on this, give a check. Come back. Now, knight f5 turns to win more material. She allows it. Check. Uh, take another one. There are no stalemate tricks because Black's King always has G7 available, but if somehow my Rook was on this rank, there would be stalemate tricks, which is why I shall just come back. Come back. And now start pushing the H pawn. H4. Let's just get the pawn to H6 and give mate H5. H6 is very possible too. Uh, yeah, black doesn't have much to do against this. I'll just give a quick check. Forcing the king back to g8. Now h6. Rook forced to come back to b8. Uh, otherwise there will be some more serious problems. Okay, rook b8. And now let's put the finishing touches on this. Knight d5 looks strong. Threatening to go knight to f6. Uh, okay, he doesn't. She doesn't stop that. Knight to f6. There's no way to give up the. There's no good way to give up the rook. So this would be stalemate if uh, my opponent somehow could give up the rook by force. But there is no way to do that. So rook g8 and rook h7. Gg. Uh, let's head to the analysis board. Okay, so. Let's go back. All right, so my opponent played this bishop g4, and in one of the previous games I was mentioning that this can be punished. Uh, some people like to play these eccentric variations against knight to f3, two knight to f3, possibly because they're doing everything they can to avoid the London. Oops, to avoid the London. I'm not much of a London player uh, myself. I used to play it, but I just do this to go c4 on move three. 
Um, but it can be punished if you go bishop uh, g4 or f5 too early because you're deserting the b7 pawn. In this case, it was a little different where the bishop ended up on f7, but nevertheless, we had a really good position to control the center. Knight a6 I thought was very strong. I think black might need to go for something like this, knight b4, knight d3, even being willing to give up this pawn. Just give the pawn back and uh, take the two bishops. But even then, it's tough because these are your two bishops, uh, and they're not very powerful. So knight h6, the knight doesn't have a good way to come out. I can see what he was trying to do here. Uh, the only other way to really bring the knight out is e6 and knight e7, but nobody wants to do this. Uh, e6 just blocks your bishop. I can even take this pawn. Queen b3 and the position's already overwhelming. So it's not possible. Knight h6, uh, knight h6 just take. And knight h4 is a, is a nice little touch because the main piece that's holding together the black position here is the bishop on f7. So if we can somehow manage to get rid of this bishop on f7, we can win the game. So knight to h4 and bishop to h5. And here we have a sneaky little tactic that I was talking about. Just chop on b5 and take on b5 again because we have queen h5 at the end. Okay, now here I was debating whether to snap the pawn or to go for uh, something better like d5. So after I take the pawn, it's only plus four, which is plus five, which is more than I should be asking for. But queen h5 is even stronger. Queen h5, king e7, and d5. And, and this seems right, uh, going for this approach. Queen f3, and now black is going to be giving up this crucial f5 score no matter what. King d7, and look at this move, rook a6, very powerful. Very stockfish-like move, even though uh, I think it's possible to find. It's just a very powerful approach. Queen takes f6. Wow, very good. Now just rook c6, wow. All right, so that was the approach to take. And later on, I was making a similar decision, whether to play e5 or d5, what's better? So e5 is plus plus five-ish, uh, and d5 is the best move. I was considering this. So what happens on e5, queen e7, and now rook a6 again is, is one of the computer moves. D e6, good enough. Takes, takes, and now knight f5. Pretty cool tactic again, uh, where we have this idea where uh, after the queen takes the queen for free, we get a fork. And this ended up happening in the real game too, which is pretty cool. Uh, after e5, rook e1, and now just knight f3 wins. Okay, that was a good one. Let's, uh, okay, so we're up to like 22 something, 2230. Uh, Pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's try to get one more. We're on a hot streak. Uh, let's see what we can do. Or we can actually transition to Blitz. But okay, let's do one more rapid game. All right, D4. Let's go for our Dutch defense again. Pawn to F5. Uh, Black uh, black sometimes goes e6 first and then f5 to avoid all the sidelines because white has knight c3, bishop g5, h3, g4, e4. Basically, any move white has uh, in that position after move one is playable. But uh, you just have to know what to do. This knight c3 line is, is okay. Like I was saying, I think that... Uh, I think that this line is completely fine for black uh, because we have this knight to knight to e4 idea and it's just very strong. Um, okay, bishop to g5 and now we just castle and there's an interesting idea here where you go c5 and d6 with the idea that whenever uh, white plays for d5, we're going to meet it with e5. So we're going to lock up the center. Um, h6 is correct here, so we're uh, getting ready to take back with the bishop, 
and go for our c5 idea. Let's see how this works out. Um, no matter what white plays here, c5 is playable for black. So if white goes bishop h4, which is a move I've studied, uh, c5 is still possible. On bishop f4, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. I think it's possible for us to, uh, to still go for the c5. But let's see. c5, d5. And does d6 work? Uh, okay, d6 getting ready for e5. Not sure if we should do this right away. Maybe b6 is smarter here. Even though c5 is tempting always. Let's just... Let's go knight e5, or sorry, knight e4 first. Just seeing what he will do. Trying to get a feel for our opponent, what sorts of positions he likes. Uh, if he goes knight e4, we're in for a more tactical game. But if he goes just bishop d3 or queen c2, we're in for a more quiet positional game. Uh, if my opponent moves his bishop, or if he does something like this, I'll try to play against doubled pawns. So I'm going to take this knight. And now I'm going to try to play against these doubled pawns. So when your opponent has pawns like this, it commonly happens in the Nimzo Indian. And the best way to play is uh, to go for this pressure on the queen side with knight c6, knight a5, b6, bishop to a6. Uh, d6 here I think is important though, because if we go knight c6 right away, we give our opponent this d5. And that's really uncomfortable to deal with. So let's go d6 here. Our opponent could go for a quick e4. I think queen c2 is possible. Uh, go for a quick e4. Bishop to d3 too, going for e4. Um, like I mentioned earlier, generally you want to be able to meet uh, any d5 advance with e5. Uh, or any e4 advance with e5. So our opponent goes for a queen c2. Interesting. Now I think b6 should be played. Um, if b6... Then we can go for our idea of knight to c6, knight to a5, bishop a6. The only thing we have to worry about is e4. So b6, e4, how are we going to meet this? I think bishop b7 is, is perfectly fine. We shouldn't waste too much time on this position. Uh, it is just a position after all. I think b6 needs to be played. There's no great way to stop e4 here. Uh, so we just have to play uh, under the expectation that e4 will be played by white. Um, one factor to consider, maybe, is that white isn't castled. So if he tries to go for this e4 stuff while the center is completely open, he might regret that. Um, for example, after e4, there are even some tactics against this bishop. It's really important to always look at your opponent's... Um, your opponent's pieces that are on the same file as your rook. So right now, this bishop is on the same file as our rook. Most commonly, coaches will recommend this strategy uh, when you're thinking about your rook being on the same file as the enemy's queen. But it works for the bishop too. Uh, it's the same idea. So bishop to d3. Now maybe we should go for bishop b7. And our opponent is getting ready for e4. That much is clear. So maybe our next idea is knight f6, knight, knight, uh, sorry, knight d7, knight f6, and now knight e4. This is a pretty good idea too. Uh, and if our opponent castles, we can consider bishop takes f3 and bishop takes h4. So the position is kind of falling apart uh, if he castles. But he does have this e4 move, which is something I've been eyeing for a while. Do we have an exchange sack there? e4, uh, f takes e4, and now bishop takes e4, rook takes f4, bishop b7, knight d7, bishop a8, queen a8, if castles, double exchange sack with rook f3, and that's a very promising attack for black. So I, I still think e4 should be played here regardless. I don't think the exchange sack is necessarily is necessarily winning or anything close to that. Might not even go for that. Uh, another idea is, like I was mentioning, combining c5 with this knight c6, knight a5 idea. 
So we have a lot of ideas here as black. It sort of depends on what um, on what white wants to do. Uh, it really all depends on that. So let's see what white goes for in this position. Um, I'm expecting e4 though. Let's see. All right, uh, what else is possible? White doesn't really have a good place to put their king. That's, uh, that's one important factor that um, as white, you want to castle kingside, but at the same time, uh, it's very tough to castle kingside because of this uh, bishop takes f3 and bishop takes h4. So rook to h3, I think this is a good move. I sort of overlooked this um, just because it's so strange and it means that white can never castle in the future. But it's definitely worthy of consideration. Now knight d7 seems like the move. Uh, it, it's just the move you want to play in these positions because you want to bring the knight to f6 and then to e4. But what else is there? Sometimes in these positions, you really want to make e5 ideas work, even if it does mean sacrificing a pawn. But unfortunately, I don't think it works here, so let's just go knight d7. Uh, our opponent can go rook to g3, after which king h8 is probably necessary, because we don't want to allow rook g3 and bishop h6. So we'll have to do something about that. Um, knight f6 is coming. I'm, I'm not sure if white should allow this knight f6. I think this is white's last chance to go for e4. And he might have to do it. Just because it's the break that white really wants. Uh, there's no other pawn break other than d5 that white is fighting for in this position. Okay, castle's queenside. I mentioned earlier that uh, white can't really do this uh, safely. Now, whether he gets away with it or not is up to <laughs> is up to how well I play this. But white shouldn't really be able to get away with this um, castle's queenside because his pawn structure is so damaged over here. So thinking about how to take advantage of this. First idea that comes to mind is what I've been intending, which is knight to f6 to e4. Um, but there's also this queen e8 idea, and queen e8 comes with uh, the powerful punch of e5. Takes, 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 uh, and bishop a3 at the end. So I'm strongly considering this queen e8. Queen e8 seems very powerful. Should I do it? All right, let's just do it. Queen e8. Now, rook g3 might be played, after which, like I said, I'll just go for this king h8 idea. Um, anything else, and I'm pretty much getting ready to play e5. Knight g5, interesting idea. What's he trying to do, though? What does this accomplish? Why can't I just take it and run? Pretty sure I can just take and run. All right, I'm, I'm just going to do that. Uh, snap this off. Takes, takes, queen g6. Uh, so takes, takes, queen g6. g4, bishop g5, takes, takes. That might be a little sketchy. Okay. Um, I I think I, I should take it, though. There's There's no reason not to take this. It's just a, a free pawn or a free knight. I'll do it. He takes back. I think. I think this is his whole idea. Queen g4 g or queen g6 g4. I'm pretty safe if I just snap this pawn off the board. Although it might not be necessary to do that. Maybe queen g6 is just the most practical approach because if g4, I can still go for this bishop to e4. Uh, and then I'm, I'm stopping all this g takes f5 stuff. 
because I can just take back with the pawn or the bishop. Uh, so this seems pretty promising. What else can he do? Because I'm threatening bishop takes g5 too. Um, rook to h1. If rook h1, I think I can just... No, I can't. I can't snap on g5, but I can snap on g2. So he goes for this g4, and I was thinking bishop to e4 in response. And if he takes this bishop, that's just going to be tough for him, because I'll just take back. And his position is sort of sort of crumbling there because uh, his attack isn't strong enough and he no longer has this pressure. So I think he might have to go for g takes f5 here. And then I have to decide what do I want to take back with. One possibility, one strange possibility that might actually get me mated now that I think about it is g takes f5, bishop takes d3, fg6. Bishop takes c2, king takes c2, and then the rook is swinging over to h1 for a mate on h8. So I probably shouldn't go for that. Uh, so after taking on f5, I should probably take back with something. I think I'll take back with the bishop, actually. Yeah, bishop, yeah, bishop takes seems strong. Because takes, takes... Uh, if he trades the bishops, takes, takes. Now I'm, I have a fork of sorts between the queen and the rook. So I'm forcing a queen trade. So queen takes, takes. And then I just have to watch out for this g6. This is his last trick. g6. And with the same idea as before, uh, with this rook, uh, rook h1, rook h8. So he goes for f3. I am pretty much forced to take on d3, so I'll do so. He takes back. Can bishop g5 be played? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Bishop g5 seems strong. Strong enough, at least. Wait, bishop g5? gf takes, takes. Oh wait, I can take the rook. Okay, I'll just do this. Bishop g5. Now if gf, uh, if gf I can take with the queen. Queen takes, rook takes. e4 doesn't work as a tactic. Uh, not only because of rook a5, but also because I just take the bishop for free with check. Um, white doesn't have much more than that in that position. So he probably, what should he do? Maybe rook h1 is a necessary try. Rook h1 attempting to deliver mate, but I don't see a mate here. It just looks like a piece to me. So maybe there is nothing. What else could there be? GF seems like the most reasonable try for an attack. But I think what my opponent might have missed is this... Uh, G takes f5, queen takes f5, uh, bishop takes g5, queen takes h3 idea. So he goes rook h1, he's he's going for it. I'll just trade this bishop off, uh, just because it's sort of a nuisance in my position. And trading one more piece is always good when you're up. After he takes back with his pawn, I may just start running with my king. King f7. I think that's strong, actually, because after king f7, I'm threatening to take king f7. And I'm threatening to take this now because the queen is defended. So he has to try for something else. Honestly, why might I have to go for some c5 soon um, and just, like, throw his pawn down the board? Uh, to, to, to Rook to e1. Can I take this? Why can't I take that? If he takes my queen, he's in trouble, though, because... Or if he takes my queen and he takes my pawn, he's in trouble, because I have a double attack on his rooks. I can show that. Um, queen takes g6, king takes g6, rook takes e6, king f7. Okay, so he goes for this, reasonable. Now I just take the queen, though. 
and I ask him what he has and the answer is nothing but okay let's how to convert we have time we're up like two minutes so let's just figure this one out let's go rookie eight first defend this pawn prepare e5 and then we possibly have some ideas with knight to f6 okay rook f3 now can we just do king g8 okay e5 is it just seems correct but we don't even have to do things like that we can just go Rook f5, play things simple, king back to f7, knight f8. Okay, knight f8, can I do this without getting mated? Okay. Scoop up f4. Come back to f6. And now if he goes rook h3, there's actually no mate because I just take the g6 pawn, knight g6. And now there's no more rook, rook h8, so our opponent resigns. Uh, very good game. Pretty, uh, pretty comparable. Um, pretty comparable ratings there, but we were able to get the best of our opponent. Uh, let's just head to analysis. All right, it was just a normal Dutch defense. D4, F5, like this. And here, uh, not sure if I mentioned this, but Richard Report has some interesting games with d5, knight to e4. And this is pretty powerful for black. If you're interested in the Dutch, you can look into this, but I, I won't waste too much time on this. Uh, just because it's really niche, niche Dutch theory. But here, bishop g5. And now, in the bishop, f, in the, in the bishop h4 positions... I know c5 is possible, it's the computer recommendation. And after d5, the, the computer wants d6. Uh, I wonder if it's the same for bishop f4 though, because if bishop f4, then there's long-term pressure on d6. So yeah, here the computer doesn't want c5, and it, it wants the move I played, knight e4. Uh, takes, and now d6 feels correct, b6. And yeah, like I was saying, white needs to play e4. It's just like uh, it's just something that's important to the position. Otherwise, he's gonna get squeezed with knight d7 and f6. So if e4 here, there's e5 apparently. E5. What if takes? Takes. Takes. Okay, just takes. Bishop d6. Wow, so today we've seen two pretty cool pawn sacrifices, one in the Catalan and one in this line, where the side that we're playing just straight up gives a pawn for a counterplay. Uh, bishop takes g2 is possible. There's a pin on the e-file. So lots of ideas there. But there's one idea I wanted to point out in particular that was interesting. So I played this queen e8. I was deciding between knight f6 and queen e8. They're, they're about the same. Actually, now the computer likes... Okay, it's going back and forth, but queen e8 is interesting because now the threat is e5. So what I wanted to show was, let's say rook h1, not saying it's a good move, but e5 takes, takes, and now next move, if the bishop moves, we're threatening a pawn fork. So uh, white's just going to be lost there if, if we're able to get this fork. So if they try to take, 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 it looks like material is equal, but at the end we have bishop to a3 scooping up the bishop on e5 and winning the game so in the game my opponent got a little frustrated and played knight g5 uh i guess thinking that they needed to get an attack going but this was just a blunder unfortunately and we can just take 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 queen g6 and bishop to e4 all right f3 and yeah this position Pretty straightforward conversion. I don't think blunders were made uh, on my side from this point. Okay, just rook f5 and, and knight f8, and, and this was an easy conversion. Okay, that was a good one. I am definitely pleased with that. I can't say I'm unhappy with that game.
uh, I think that might be uh, I think that might be a pretty good spot to either shift to blitz or or take another one uh, you know what let's uh, let's play some blitz it's almost two so the the arena mu must be starting so let's go to arena tournaments uh, which one should we do super blitz or all right let's do or maybe we should do the rapid arena which one hmm not sure okay let's just play the end of the rapid arena and then we'll call it after that so there are only 30 minutes left in this uh we're not going to be able to come back from 650 second place for a win but <laughs> we'll do our best uh with our new rapid rating now we have a, at least 10 games under our belt and we are 2269 no question mark so let's see if we can get to that 2300 mark uh, on this stream. Okay, E4, let's go for the Karo Khan again, C6. And, okay, I'll just pre-move D5, no matter what he does, I'll play that. E5, and now Bishop to F5. Uh, H4, I go H6 here. I think this is pretty strong. Uh, Bishop, D, Bishop to D3 is not the main move in this position. Usually white goes for G4, after which it gets crazy complicated. But after bishop d3, I should just take an e6. And now, if you notice the structure, we basically have a French defense without the dark square, or sorry, without the light square bishop. So black has what he wants in the French. Uh, this center position with pressure on d4. Uh, and no light square bishop. So it's like the ideal version of the French. I had a game here uh, a little while back where my opponent played this queen to b5, uh, but after queen d7, takes, takes, king takes, it's just uh, it's just worse for white. There's an idea here that I've seen Karpov play, okay my opponent castles this way, I've seen Karpov play c4, knight e7, knight f5, but I'm not sure if I need to play c4 yet. Maybe I could just hold off on c4. 97 seems strong. And just trying to go into uh, go into f5. So I think this is, uh, is pretty good. Okay, he takes. This might be a wise choice. But now knight f5 is a double attack between the pawn on h4 and the pawn on c5. So why can't do a move that addresses both of those things? So what's he what's he going to do? I think out of these two pawns, white should definitely be very willing to part with this one, but not this one. Not this one. Because if you part with the H pawn, then suddenly there are all these threats of mate uh, on the H file, and you just really don't want to deal with that. So maybe white should play H5 here. H5 might be a little loose too, maybe G3. Uh, but either way, this is definitely the pawn that you want to keep as white, not this one. There are some pros to keeping this one, like you get queenside pressure, uh, and possibly you can even break through on the queenside, but uh, that's not necessarily guaranteed. It's possible that black gets gets to your king faster than you get to black's queenside, so he does go for g3, and now bishop c5. And I wonder if my opponent sees the sneaky, uh, sneaky knight, uh, knight g3. I think he should play king g2 just to avoid all those tricks. But let's see if he sees knight g3. Uh, point being, this bishop has a pin. So uh, this pawn is immobile. He can't take back our knight because we have a pin on his king. Okay. Um, b4 is a possible way to go about this, even though you create a, a gaping hole on the c4 square, which will be very weak later in the game. So not necessarily a good idea. Uh, King G2 should be played almost definitely. And then I'm wondering if G5 is appropriate. It's definitely in the character of the position to play G5. I'm just not sure concretely I want to do it here. Maybe just the simple Queen to C7 is enough right now. Uh, 
putting pressure on e5 and bishop to f4 will most likely be played after which g5 is a real threat so it's not something to be scoffed at uh rook e1 also very solid now i might just castle queenside and start going for g5 my opponent has to try something i think i think uh, B4 is the most crucial try. Okay, A4 is similar idea. Um, just trying to get B4, A5 in. What to do here? Uh, G5 is possible. Maybe I should prepare it with Rook to G8. Very common French idea. Okay, my opponent goes B4. We'll just tuck our bishop back to E7. And uh, my opponent wisely doesn't go for B5. B5 would allow Knight to A5. Uh, and knight a5 just blocks up the whole queenside attack. So knight b5 is a good move. How can we play against knight to b5? Maybe g5. g5 seems strong. So if knight b5, queen b8 is almost definitely the right approach. Uh, keeping an eye on the e5 pawn. And uh, in some positions, more importantly, keeping an eye on the d6 square. Uh, we don't want to allow any knight b5, knight d6 at any unwelcome time because a knight on the 6th rank is just uh, a killer to any any position. So, okay, he takes. Now I'll take back. Now I might even consider bringing my queen to d8 if he goes knight b5 because if, if the queen can somehow swing over to the king side, then the position will be very tough to defend. So... My idea now is queen d8, queen f8, and queen h6. And if I can successfully get this, then the position will be overwhelming. But queen b8 has its pros too, that I'm keeping an eye on this pawn. And after g4, I can actually take this guy. So maybe queen b8 is a better idea. Because queen b8, g4, knight takes e5 is a very important threat in the position. That might be the way to go. Uh, I know that I know that in these sorts of positions it might be tempting for White to play G4, uh, and he does it. But I think that uh, after Knight H4 check, it becomes difficult to defend. So let's think about this. Knight H4 check takes, and then okay, well we're gonna play Knight H4 check. It's just what we take back with that matters. So do we take back with the rook or the pawn? Take back with the rook, we have a lot of pressure. Take back with the pawn, we have similar pressure in the position. So if we take with the pawn, king, king h3, knight e5, overwhelming. Uh, I like pawn takes, let's take with the pawn. And now we have two threats, we have, or three threats actually, we have rook takes g4, h3 and knight takes e5 so we have like a lot of stuff here and not exactly sure how um how white's going to defend against all of it at the same time but all right let's uh let's see okay knight um knight to b5 now knight b5 can i can i play rook g4 maybe not yet so rook g4, I was thinking maybe there's some ideas in the future, rook g4, king h3, rook g3, that might be pushing it a bit. Don't really want to push my position over the edge here. I think queen b8 is, is just very solid. Come back with the queen, keep an eye on e5, and we just renew all the same threats that we had before. So we're threatening... I mean, a6 is very solid too. Just kick the knight out and then do whatever we want to do. Uh, just to not allow any counterplay. White might be trying to centralize his knight. Get the knight closer to the defense of the king. Uh, that could be that could be a very, a very good idea for white. Uh, just because otherwise he might just get mated. So bishop f4, interesting, but there's no way this works. Rook g4, king f3. 
Rook F4. Hmm. Rook G4. Rook G4 has to be played. King F4. Rook G8 seems natural. But is there any, like... Can we go for the kill? Okay, Rook G8. We should be able to... We should be able to just hold the hold the position tight with uh, with Rook G. We don't need to go for anything crazy right now. Um, although a one punch kill would be ideal. Rook F4, King F4, F6. Rook F4, King F4, F6. King E3 takes E5. Everything looks really good here, honestly. I shouldn't be too picky. Rook g8, does my opponent have anything like super strong that I should watch out for? Is c4 coming? I mean, rook f4 has to be winning. There's no way it's not winning. R rook f4, king f4, we have some time to figure this out. Rook f4, king f4, f6, c4, knight takes e5. Okay. Okay, that's good. Rook takes f4. F6. And now white has a tough time defending, and this queen on b8 keeps an eye on the king uh, over on f4. So uh, f takes e5 is coming, and I I realize that after c4, knight takes e5 just, just wins. So he can't do this. He has to do something else. I think king e3 must be played. King e3, knight e5, though. Maybe even f e5 with the idea of bishop to g5. Every, everything's really good here. We just have to be really careful not to throw away the advantage uh, because of the exchange sacrifice. So just important to, to keep up the pressure. Otherwise, we might lose the advantage. Okay, knight d6 is a little odd. Maybe just king d7. I'm tempted to just go for king d7. Even though it might be unsound. Hmm. No, this is probably fine. King d7 is probably fine. And I don't really see what white's going to do about this. Knight f7. So king d7, knight f7, knight takes e5. Knight takes e5, f takes e5. Okay, we're we're fine there. Okay, king d7. Knight f7, f e5. Knight e5, knight e5. Oops, knight e5, knight e5. Rook e5. Rook f8 at the end, picking up the rook on e5. King moves and queen takes e5. So that works out for us. Does he have anything else? What about just king e3? King e3, knight e5. b5, knight e5. He might sack. I don't know. Uh, not really sure what white should do here. But now his king is just in way too much trouble. And on top of that, we're not even going to be down the exchange. So because we're picking up this knight. This is the sort of position where they say uh, we have the material and the compensation because uh, because we're not down any material anymore and uh, okay he resigns and we have a, a stunning advantage there. Who are we going to have next? Still 17 minutes left in the arena. Let's see if we can get another win before time runs out. Looks like this top game here here is a little bit weird. White has a bishop on c3 somehow. Uh, not sure how that. Oh, don't wanna don't wanna look at it that closely. Uh, okay, White's probably gonna play bishop to b4 here. Just hit the rook on f8, and then there's some knight c6 ideas too. White's definitely better there though. 
Uh, black did the right thing by not opening the center, though. This position is better for black than any position where uh, where the center is open. So this c4 move, although it may not look pretty, it does the job for now. Um, b3, a4 is also an idea for white. They're really taking their time with the pairings. Okay. And I'm a I'm a very new streamer, but uh, I don't know how all this works yet. But I would really appreciate it if you guys uh, followed my channel or subscribed or whatever, whatever it's called. I will be streaming regularly, uh, and coming up with some new content on on a very regular basis. Okay, so B6. I'm not so sure about. I'm not so sure about b6 because you're creating this weakness on this diagonal that might not be solvable in some positions. For example, if bishop b7 here, there are already ideas of queen a4, and you have to be careful. You, you pretty much have to play queen d7, after which I'll just castle uh, and try to build up the pressure with the knight c3. Um, Rook d1, e4. So black's already in a little bit of trouble. f6 cannot be correct. I'll just castle. Basically, whenever black plays this f6, what they're really doing is taking away the f6 square for their knight. So there are other ways to stop knight e5. Queen d7 was the best way to do so. But also after f6, notice that the e6 pawn is really weak. So if I can somehow get to that, like knight c3, rook e1, e4, then he, uh, black's going to be in a lot of trouble. So a5, I'll just go rook e1, maybe. Just rook e1. And e4. And now this is... You can, you can smell the blood in the water, almost. Queen d7. Now, what if just knight c3? Uh, okay. Maybe bishop h3. Bishop h3 is very interesting. Maybe I should also just take the, uh, take the bishop pair with a3. What to do? Okay, let me just take the bishop pair first. Before doing anything else, take the two bishops. Oh, wow. dc4. What is this? Takes, takes, takes. Takes, takes. Okay, so if I take on b4, he takes, 